initial release from TI was the Speak and Spell. Mm -hmm. The next in the series was the Speak and Read, which had an expanded vocabulary. And then uh, the final in the series of three was the Speak and Math. The Speak and Math, if uh, uh, circuit vendors don't know it already, they probably do, is the most uh, high fidelity of the three units. So if I'm going, if I have my choice uh, to bend a uh, speak, it will be the speak and math if I can find one. Now, each has its own particular assets. As I said, the speak and read has a wider vocabulary, and it says a lot of really, really crazy things. One of the things it says is, let's smell the scissors some more. Yet, I don't know, don't ask me, but that's what it says. It will also run endless lines of gibberish and electronic music and again bottomless well looping and all of that kind of thing. Uh, they will all do that. And the special advantage of the initial speak and spell, the push button variety, that was followed by the membrane keypad, but the original push button type split the uh, allophone articulation into two signal streams. Both signal streams were fed to the same speaker. That speaker had a common and two positives. Usually a speaker just has two lugs. The speaker in the original push button had three. Immediately I thought stereo. This has to be wired in stereo and I found out that those three contacts can be wired using any one as a ground and the other two as a hot you will still get stereo separation, a splitting of anything the original speak and spell says. So it intrinsically is the only stereo speak and spell available, although it is wired for mono. This is a standard control array on an encanter, pretty much the same uh, control array that I put on most standard encanters. This one is special simply because it is a hand art encanter where I have marked it up. Uh, with different colors. If you look closely, you will see that B in is brought forward through those letters not being uh, colored. So I do that as a commemorative encounter when uh, Mike Rosenthal launched the Circuit Bent series in New York at the Tank on 42nd Street. Um, T A N K was brought forward rather than B E I N. Uh, to commemorate that event. But for this event, this encounter is going to be won by somebody for $5. This is the uh, BN raffle encounter. There's the raffle ticket right there. It's upside down. There it is. Um, so for this one, because I'm very, very familiar with this control array and I know that it will last forever without damaging the instrument, I have simply put my usual control array on there. What is it? Well, this is reset down here. Up here is looping. This auditions the loops. When you find a loop that you like, you then lock the loop in like that. These are streaming switches. Depending upon which one you hit, you will get different uh, recombinations of the phonem or allophone, I should say, output of the machine. Streaming, sometimes stopping, depending upon the moment that you throw the switch. Uh, very unusual, rather than looping, ongoing streams of chance uh, music. This is a pitch dial, and this will turn the pitch of the instrument way, way, way down, or way up high. This is a body contact for vibrato. You know, vibrato, I guess, is not a big event, but it's one of the ways that we animate music, like rocking a finger on a violin string. The, that animation of voice uh, is very important. We hear a lot of animated voices in the world, bird song and, and uh, such things as that, that make us realize something is vibrant and alive and singing for joy because its emotion now is coming out through the intonation. Uh, of its vocalizations. So little subtleties like that can go a long, long way. And the little bit of vibrato that is brought forth with that body contact uh, can really sweeten and uh, animate a voice nicely.
<laughs> well, with one body contact, yes, uh, you know, you, you get the simple vibration thing happening. With two uh, contacts, the electricity actually flows. This only has one, but if I had put a second one on here, the electricity would flow out one through your body and back into the other contact, turning you into a variable resistor, but then aren't we all? I, I just want the person that wins it to use it and to be happy with it and to talk to me about it after they win it so I can tell them how to make it live a long and happy life. And the way that's done, honestly, is to simply reset it. Anytime an instrument, a circuit bent instrument crashes, it is now in a sustained unknown. We don't know whether it's eating itself away inside or whether it's just happily twiddling its thumbs. We just don't know. Uh, if you want to play safe with your circuit bent instrument, be it an encanter or not, find a way to interrupt the battery supply. That's what the little switch does here. It's a normally closed push button. As soon as you push that, it's the same thing as pulling the batteries out and then putting them back in. It just is a little bit faster than doing that. So we save the life of a circuit bent instrument by resetting it when it crashes. Every one of these instruments that I've made since 19... Uh, 78 is still alive and still kicking. Everyone that you saw in the slideshow can be turned on and played. I attribute that to the quick resetting during any crash. And boy, do I get to that button fast. Let's smell the scissors some more.